Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, let's start with that storm because we're within 24 hours of a lot of folks starting with snow and then changing to rain at the coast. But if you want heavy snow, you're going to have to go Poconos up into the mountains, the Berkshires, and we'll get into the details there and when it finally leaves. Also, an ABC News exclusive with Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her first on-camera interview since being released from prison. We'll talk freedom, regrets, and so much more on GMA. All right, if you're looking to buy appliances or just want to treat yourself to something new, January deals are here and in stores. We'll tell you all about them ahead in our next hour of GMSA. And could we be in for an economic soft landing? Today's job report is expected to show us just how that could be possible. We'll tell you why many people are having a hard time actually believing that. Plus the latest when it comes next, or what is next in fact, for the father and son arrested in connection for Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra's death. And we're also gonna be discussing the charges that they're facing so far. All right, things looking pretty good out there on the roadways right now. I-35 at O'Connor on the northeast side. Traffic moving pretty smooth there. Uh, one crash to let you know about, but it's not on the highways. We'll talk all about this and more coming up in our next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. Let's look out there with a live cam, another cold start to your day, but I'm looking forward to seeing some sun today and this weekend. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Yeah, a lot of people getting ready for the weekend here. Good morning. It's Friday, January 5th. I'm actually taking this weekend to just kind of relax a little bit after yes. the uh, holidays and New Year's Eve. Good idea. A, a vacation from your vacation. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah. yeah. We'll take it. <laughs> but again, if we've been talking about this all week long, if you haven't taken down Christmas decorations, outdoor decorations yet, uh, make sure you take them down this weekend because we're talking about that big front moving through here with the windy conditions on Monday as well as Tuesday. Now, it's not as chilly as what it has been the past couple of more Mornings. So we have that kind of a damp cool out there. And as you can see, visibility out at the airport is very, very good. With all the rain that we had overnight, that's worked its way off to the east. Picked up some uh, pretty good amounts, about two inches down around Quero. Elsewhere, it was a uh, quarter inch, third of an inch of rain. We'll take anything we can get. Obviously, not a huge rain event. Now, on the heels of that, as skies clear out a little bit off to the west, we're seeing some fog, very thick fog heading out 90 and toward Castroville, going up 10 in toward the hill country, going to run into some of that fog and further on out to the west there, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, a little bit going down 35 in toward Catula as well as Carrizo Springs. So this is going to be what we have to watch out for over the next couple of hours. Then, yeah, beautiful day today, as Steph was talking about. Looking forward to some sunshine today. At low 40s in the hill country, 51 here in town and very consistent around the metropolitan area. Mountain Cedar came down again yesterday. Remember, it peaked a few days ago, 23,000, and it continues to drop down. Just uh, if you if you suffer, make sure you have all your allergy medicine ready for Monday because that's when the big front moves on through here. So it's probably going to give a really good shake to those mountain cedar trees. Mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning. A little bit of leftover rain off to the east. Then that continues to work its way on out of here. We watch out for some patchy fog. Sunshine then warm up nicely 62 already by noon and then we're going to be topping off at 67. So about 10 degrees warmer 10 to 15 degrees warmer than where we were yesterday. Beautiful. It's going to cool off quickly tonight though. So make sure you have a jacket handy and then chilly mornings, beautiful afternoons this weekend. Details on that front when that's going to be coming through and what's in store in behind it. Maybe looking at a freeze next week again here in town. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, what's going on? Yeah, Mike, things looking pretty good out there. There if you're getting out and about during our six o'clock hour, taking a look 281 Grayson right there by the Pearl. We have smooth sailing 90 at loop 410. Same situation as well. One quick check of our maps right now and you see a no major crashes or incidents on the highways, but we do have a crash being reported here at Callahan and Culebra. So obviously it's off the highway, but still one of the major, major couple of roads that people use to get in and around the west side. But otherwise, things looking pretty good out there, Stephanie, as people again make their way out to work or maybe uh, grab a little bit of a breakfast or a coffee heading out on your Friday morning. Yeah, now's the time to do it. Thank you, RJ. And this morning we are learning more about the death of a six-year-old girl. That little girl has been identified as Hosanna Sancho. Now police arrested her mother, this woman, Nefa Teria Sancho, for the child's death. She is now facing a capital murder charge for a child under the age of 10. Wednesday, around 3 p.m., police were called to the Frontera Crossing apartment complex on Watson Road, and Hosanna was found unresponsive with a wound to her upper body. 
Nefetidia Sancho is in the Bear County Jail on a one dollar, excuse me, one million dollar bond. Online court records show the girl's mother had a previous conviction in 2010 for injury to a child. Now, a woman will be spending 10 years in prison after she was convicted in the death of a 78 year old woman. According to the Bear County DA's office, Sylvia Ann Lopez was intoxicated on prescription medications while she was driving. She veered off the road when she hit and killed a woman who was walking her dog on the sidewalk. Lopez later admitted she had taken several medications that made her disoriented and drowsy. San Antonio police arrested a 33-year-old man in connection with a hit and run that left a woman badly injured and ultimately in the hospital. So this all happened on December 21st. This is 33-year-old Tyrell Benjamin. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar said that he took off after hitting that woman on Misty Ridge near O'Connor Road on the northeast parts of San Antonio. Benjamin, you see here, is charged with collision involving serious bodily injury. And according to the sheriff, the victim is a 68-year-old woman who was walking to work when she was hit. She suffered a broken pelvis, a broken arm, and may lose one of her eyes. An arrest has been made in a deadly shooting at a convenience store from earlier this week. In a Facebook post from the department, Fredericksburg police arrested the man you, that you see right here. This is 21-year-old Wes Sigco Rapid. Police say that he's the man wearing a skeleton mask who shot and killed another man during a store robbery on Tuesday night. Rapid is now being held in the Gillespie County Jail on a capital murder charge. Well, less than two hours before he was pulled over for a DWI, San Antonio City Councilman Mark White gave a council colleague a ride home. And that comes directly from White, who spoke with City Hall reporter Garrett Berger about what led up to his arrest. December 29th was a long day for Mark White. The District 10 Councilman declined to do an on-camera interview, but did speak with us over the phone. After flying into Houston that morning, following a trip to Australia, White says he drove back to San Antonio. At about 5.30, he went out to El Mirasol, where he says there was a group of people, including District 6 Councilwoman Melissa Cabello Haverda. Councilwoman Sukor was there as well, though in a statement, the D1 Councilwoman said she ran into White before leaving to host her staff holiday dinner. After time at El Mirasol and Myron's Prime Steakhouse next door, White says he drove Cabello Haverda home at about 9.15 or 9.30. She was feeling too sick to go to Thirsty Horse Saloon and Dance Hall, where he headed next, he said, and was not in the position to drive. Cabello Haverda, who plans to run for mayor next year, declined to comment for this story. Shortly after 11 o'clock that night, a San Antonio police officer on Loop 410 pulled White over. The councilman told the officer he had three beers and after field sobriety testing was arrested for DWI. Almost exactly a year after his predecessor, Clayton Perry's DWI charge. After former Councilman Clayton Perry's drunken hit and run, he was given a vote of no confidence by his council colleagues and stripped of his committee assignments. As for White, a City Hall source says council members are expected to discuss next steps in a closed door session next week. Mike Gallagher is a former D10 councilman who returned as a temporary fill-in for Perry. He's currently the head of the Northeast Neighborhood Alliance and hopes White doesn't get the same sanctions as his predecessor. I really uh, believe that uh, it should be discussed by council. Everybody should understand what happened, but at the same time realize this was not nearly the same kind of event. White told KSAT he had zero excuses, and he emphasized that, quote, nobody should blame Councilwoman Kaur or Councilwoman Haverda for anything. It was my decision to drive. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, now to the latest in the race for the White House. President Biden hitting the campaign trail later today. This as the Republican presidential hopefuls make a final push in Iowa. Here's ABC's Allison Kosick with the latest. This morning, President Biden is hoping to jumpstart his re-election campaign. He's visiting Valley Forge, Pennsylvania today, a key site from the Revolutionary War, where he's expected to lay out what he believes is at stake in the upcoming election. America's still a place of possibilities. The Biden-Harris campaign releasing its first ad of the year, time to coincide with the third anniversary of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. I believe in free and fair elections. There's something dangerous happening in America. There's an extremist movement that does not share the basic beliefs in our democracy. All of us are being asked right now, what will we do to maintain our democracy? History's watching. The world is watching. 
On the Republican side, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis speaking at town halls last night. If I tell you I'm going to do something, you take it to the bank, we are going to deliver on it. Haley citing polls claiming she'd be the stronger candidate in the general election. I defeat Biden by 17 points. But Haley has faced criticism after suggesting at a rally in New Hampshire this week that Republicans in the Granite State do a better job picking presidents than voters in Iowa. You know that you correct it. You know that you continue to go. <laughs> and then my sweet state of South Carolina brings it home. Haley now saying she was only joking. Meanwhile, Chris Christie, the only GOP primary candidate to sharply criticize frontrunner Donald Trump, has released a new ad acknowledging he was wrong to endorse Trump in 2016. I did it because he was winning. And I did it because I thought I could make him a better candidate and a better president. Well, I was wrong. I made a mistake. Back to President Biden, after his visit to Valley Forge, he'll head to Nikki Haley's home state of South Carolina next week to speak at the historic Mother Emanuel AME Church, where nine people were murdered in 2015. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. All right, we're getting you up and going on your Friday morning, 609 right now, and uh, 50 degrees outside. Well, TikTok and Peloton teaming up, what they're doing in their latest collaboration and how you can participate. And if you're looking to buy appliances or just want to treat yourself to something new, January deals are here and in stores. We'll tell you all about them coming up after the break. And it's still cold out there on this Friday morning, but Friday afternoon is going to look pretty nice. We're going to check in with Mike for all those details, and including what to expect this weekend coming up. Welcome back at 613. Well, the holiday credit card bills haven't even come in yet, and already there are more sales to check out. And if you waited on buying a new TV, well, you're in luck. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris says January is a good time to buy. After you ring in the new year, you can ring up some deals. It's no surprise that the start of the year brings sales on items like fitness trackers, treadmills, and ellipticals. But also keep in mind that Martin Luther King Jr. Day falls in January, and this usually means big deals around mattresses. Expect more mattress sales in a couple of weeks, but right now, the Casper Original Foam Mattress is $1,100 for a queen size at Walmart and Best Buy. That's $200 saved. Consumer Reports tracks prices on its top-rated products all year and found some deep discounts right now, like new sheets for that new mattress. These microfiber sheets from Milani are $32.85 on Amazon. As we get halfway into January, look for super deals for the big game. With the Super Bowl coming up, a lot of TV manufacturers and retailers have big sales on TVs, so if you're looking for a new set to watch the big game, you're in luck. Right now, this 55-inch Samsung OLED TV is $18.98 at Amazon. This 4K OLED is among the best TVs Consumer Reports says it's ever tested. And don't forget about the sound. This sound bar from Samsung is less than $500 at Apt Electronics, Amazon, and Walmart. That's 80 bucks saved. It comes with a wireless subwoofer. January is also a good time to find a deal on a humidifier to help with the dry winter weather and to find a deal on a treadmill to help with those resolutions. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. You know, I'm out here trying to save some money during this month. Marilyn's trying to get <laughs> Yeah, I know. She's like, here's what's on sale. <laughs> um, traffic looking pretty good out there right now. 281 at the quarry. Uh, you see things moving pretty smooth north and south there. 281 loop 410. Uh, again, not many major issues to let you know about right now. That crash that was on Calabria and Callahan, that has been cleared out. So things looking pretty good across the city, guys. Good but, news here for our drivers. But look at how much yeah. money you'll save. Oh, uh, we can look at it that way. I mean, I, I, I look at it that way very often. Often, actually, maybe too often. Like when you go to like, <laughs> yeah. Costco. But look at yeah. what I saved on yeah. all. <laughs> Even though I spent anyway. this much. Uh, jacket's still a good idea this morning because it's uh, still that kind of damp chill out there, although nowhere near as cold as what it has been the past couple of mornings. Got a few leftover showers off to the east and some fog. That's what we're going to have to watch out for around the area this morning. And then later on today, 
beautiful day. 67 degrees, a bit on the warm side, and plenty of sunshine out there. We're looking at a fantastic weekend That's prior good. to that big front moving through yeah. the first of the week. All right, take a look outside with live cam right now. We're not seeing anything, uh, any problems out there by the airport. You do want to watch out for maybe some, uh, so still some leftover damp roads around the area. Fog now, zero visibility at Castroville, half mile at Bernie. Then it has cleared out nicely uh, right around Kerrville. So it's it's real patchy, obviously. You know, you're going to be, be driving down 90 and you're going to run in basically a wall of fog out there heading in toward Castroville. And then further out, to the west, uh, Junction, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs. You also have some of that fog to deal with. So this is going to be the problem for the next couple of hours. And then watch it even over by, say, Port S.A. Some of that fog may start to work its way in here. Any of the rain is, well, a few leftover sprinkles just to the east of San Marcos, as well as down around Victoria. But that will all continue to work its way off to the east. All right, let's jump ahead and take a look at the uh, Climate Prediction Center for the 11th in through the middle of then next week or the week after I should say so this is looking in toward uh, the, the middle of next week and then going into the weekend and it looks like it is going to be leaning toward the dry side of things what's interesting though is how temperatures are going to be leaning toward being below normal now we're still in the historically coldest time of the year with a normal high of only 63 degrees and normal low of 41 and then we go into eight to 14 days out and this is going to be in toward the weekend leading in toward uh, the MLK day on the 15th right in the middle of that and that's going to be on the the cool side of things as well or at least leaning in that direction all right Monday the winds around here when that big front moves on through we've got great looking weekend 25 mile per hour wind gusts. This is by Monday afternoon, but look at that in the hill country, 30, 35, 40, 45 mile per hour wind gusts, and it gets even windier overnight. And we're looking at uh, some gusts 50 miles per hour or even stronger than that. And that's going to be early on Tuesday as well. So that's why we've been talking about how make sure if you have any outdoor decorations still out, take them down this weekend. Um, patio furniture, garbage cans, whatever the case is, anything that can be blown around by these strong winds, that's going to be the situation on Monday afternoon going into Tuesday. So here's what the forecast looks like today. 67 degrees, absolutely beautiful out there. Same thing tomorrow. And then Sunday, we're going to have some clouds moving on in here late in the day. Cold mornings, beautiful afternoons, temperatures, high temperatures are going to be just a little bit above normal. And then we go into Monday. We do have a chance for some showers a couple of thunderstorms with that front approaching. Most of that, though, is going to be further up to the north and to the east. We'll have a few of them around here. Then once that front moves through, which right now the timing of it is midday, just after noon on Monday, very windy, windy overnight into Tuesday. Then once those winds settle down, we are looking at uh, possibility of a freeze here in town by Wednesday morning. Okay, the, the wind mid-afternoon Monday, you said. Well, that's when the that. front moves through, and then the wind, and it'll be windy right behind that, but it's going to pick up then overnight and into the early morning hours of Tuesday. Okay, so school pickup will be fairly okay. It'll be, day. yeah, but it will be breezy on Monday afternoon. So. All right, thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, enjoy your weekend then while you can. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And take the decorations down. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, guys, 620 right now and uh, 50 degrees outside. And coming up in this morning's GMA first look, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, the woman who served time for killing her mother, is sitting down for her first interview. We're going to have a look at that next. Y'all, Wayfair is the talk of the neighborhood. Come on. We wanted a recliner. But it had to be chic. <laughs> so we wayfared it. Wayfair for the win. Hey, neighbor, look at fancy. Fancy, nah. We wayfared it and saved a ton. Wayfair does it again. It's beautiful. I didn't know you wayfared. Oh, girl, we wayfair. Tile, faucet, the works. Guess the wayfair word is out. Wayfair, you've got just what I need. When you smell the amazing scent of Gain Flings, Time stops. Your heart races. Your eyes close. And you realize you're in love. Steve! With a laundry detergent. Game Flames. Seriously good scent. And 50% more fresh. Now that's love at first sniff. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. 
Do you feel any conflict with that? You've got fame, even though you participated in a murder? It's been just over a week since Gypsy Rose Blanchard was released from prison. Hey everyone, this is Gypsy. I'm finally free. The 32-year-old spending more than eight years behind bars for the second-degree murder of her mother. Gypsy is a victim of her mother's psychological disorder, commonly known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy, in which parents seek sympathy through the exaggerated or made-up illnesses of their children. And this morning, Gypsy's telling her story to ABC News' Deborah Roberts. What do you regret most? I have lots of regrets. I always say that if I could go back in time and change things, I absolutely would. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more of our exclusive interview with Gypsy Rose Blanchard. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Peloton is bringing its workouts to TikTok. The partnership will allow for new plans to exercise. Of course, people trying to get that early in on January. With or without the equipment, Peloton will have a hub on TikTok with content that includes video of workouts and celebrity collaborations. It's a classic board game now powered by artificial intelligence. Hasbro has released an online version of Trivial Pursuit. Unlike the 41-year-old board game, the questions are generated by artificial intelligence based on the player's interests and suggestions. I think we're still looking at the phone here, though. It comes after Mattel released Pictionary AI back in September. Yeah, the one we're looking at here is that... Uh, okay, oh, there you so go. There's, there's a Trivial, trivial Pursuit. <laughs> but what we just saw right now was uh, that old BlackBerry. Of course, we all remember that. Well, a company called Clicks for iPhone came out with an, a phone case that actually comes with a physical keyboard. Mm -hmm. So it's compatible with the iPhone 14, the newest models there. Runs off of the phone's battery power, and it will cost you about $140. I was thinking to myself... I don't remember a world kind of without the iPhones anymore, but the Blackberries. It's been a while. Yeah, it's the Blackberries <laughs> were pretty popular in their heyday. They were popular, but they didn't they didn't last as long as right. as the yeah. iPhone. And then yeah. I think you you were talking about you kind of held like off on, I on getting the. Off I did too. I mean, all my friends had, and I was like, no, I'm going to keep my my little flip phone <laughs> forever. Like, I'm with that Nokia, that snake. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, but yeah, they've come a long way. Yeah. All right, guys. Time now is 6:26 and uh, still 50 degrees outside. And we could be in for an economic soft landing. Today's job report is expected to show us how that could be possible. So ahead, we're going to tell you why many people are having a hard time believing that. And a quick look here at Trans Guide. Again, roads have been looking pretty good. So if you're headed out right now across the city of San Antonio, not many major accidents or incidents to let you know about, but we'll continue to monitor and give you the very latest as it becomes available to us. Good morning, rise and shine. We're starting off another cold morning, but 50 degrees, so not as cold as yesterday morning. We were in the 40s, but I mean, we should expect that. It's January, right? Yes, and uh, we have made it to the end of the work week, a short work week for a lot of people out there. Yeah. Still maybe, uh, I don't know if people are still recovering from the New Year's holiday, but uh, maybe it might take it a little bit easy this weekend. I think so. <laughs> I think a lot of people are. Happy Friday, by the way. Yeah, I, I think people need to take, when they, you know, a lot of people that I, I talked to at least here mm -hmm. in the newsroom, they're like, I need a vacation from my vacation. Yeah, do you feel that way as well? That is the case. Sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like when you take vacation, if you're out of town, you take one extra day just kind of get you know, back you into You got to, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, one thing, you know, you mentioned it's chilly outside this morning, not as cold as where it has been, and it's still kind of that, that dampish cool, so you want a jacket, obviously, and then get ready for a beautiful day and a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Traffic over there, 410 by the airport. The road may still be a bit damp. We did have those showers overnight. We are at 51 degrees, two points at 49. So when these two numbers are neck and neck, we have little or no wind out there, starting to see some fog. Now, there's no fog, obviously, in that picture right Right now, however, head out 90 in toward Castroville. Look at that, Port SA, 10 miles visibility, and then all of a sudden you run into a wall of fog heading out toward Castroville. In the same situation now, visibility has dropped down up there on the northwest side going out 10 in toward Bernie. Elsewhere, very good. Further on out to the west, though, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass, a lot of thick fog. So this is going to be very patchy, those little spots right there. But just watch out for that. Now, as far as the rain that we had overnight, that has continued to work its way on off to the uh, east of us and getting on out of here. 51 degrees right now here in town, mid 40s in the hill country and looking at, a, like I said, a beautiful day today. Mountain Cedars on the moderate side. It has been coming down ever since it peaked a couple of days ago, well up in the 22, 23,000 range. 
Probably going to be looking at numbers like that again come Monday as well as Tuesday in behind that big front that moves on through here. As far as today, showers off to the east, some patchy fog, and then lots of sunshine. Gorgeous day, mid upper 60s around here. Beautiful weekend, cold mornings, plenty of sunshine. Once again, mid upper 60s. And then on Monday, we do have a chance for a few showers as well as a couple of thunderstorms. Most of those are going to be up to the north and to the east. Then that front moves through early afternoon. It is going to be windy, very windy Monday afternoon and then even stronger winds overnight and to start off the day on Tuesday. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, what's going on on the roads? All right, Mike. Well, we pretty much made it uh, unscathed throughout the early part of our morning, but starting to see things pop up as people head out onto the roadways here. Loop 410 there, you see traffic moving pretty good in that area. See if we can get one more trans got shot here. 37 Hackberry traffic moving pretty well in both directions there. But we do have a crash that is now being reported on the far north, kind of northwest side there. It's gonna be on Loop 1604 at Northwest Military. According to our maps, not showing any major delays in both directions, but something that we will continue to monitor. Again, Loop 1604 at Northwest Military. One more quick look at trans guide. Traffic moving pretty good there, 410 in Ingram North and one more here, 281 at the quarry. So we'll continue to get more updates as they become available to us. Stephanie. Thank you, RJ. This morning, we are learning more about what comes next for the two suspects in the murders of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guetta. First, District Attorney Joe Gonzalez is looking into adding a charge for the death of baby Fabian, Savannah's unborn child. Now, as for Christopher Preciado, Bear County court records show he is facing three charges, capital murder of multiple people, abuse of a corpse, and altering, destroying, or concealing a corpse. The San Antonio Police Department is reporting that the 19-year-old shot and killed both Soto and Guerra in a botched drug deal. Now, court records also show that Ramon Preciado is charged with abuse of a corpse and altering, destroying, or concealing a corpse. Police say the 53-year-old helped his son hide Soto's and Guetta's bodies. His bond is set at $600,000. Meanwhile, Matthew Guetta's family spoke to us about the arrest. Matthew's father said it is a relief to know suspects have been arrested for the murders, but there are still other difficult emotions that they're dealing with. It was uh, definitely a, a relief of mine that, you know, I can hold someone accountable. It's probably going to be, you know, a, a long a long time before it's handled, but at least uh, I have someone to point the finger to, someone to vent this frustration, anger out. Uh, as of right now, Savannah Soto's family has declined to comment on the arrest, but said they might be open to talk in the future. And an effort to expand international trade is moving forward. Two Texas lawmakers say new reform will make it easier to build or expand border bridges. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz and Texas Congressman Henry Cuellar were in Laredo yesterday to celebrate changes to the presidential permit process. Now, those permits are required for construction at border crossings. The change is expected to expedite work in a process that previously took years. It will allow conditional permits to be issued while projects go through a required environmental review. This is a win for Texas small businesses and manufacturers. This is a win for jobs. This is thousands of jobs here in South Texas and all across Texas. The change will benefit several border crossings that includes the World Trade Bridge in Laredo, which is the largest U.S. port of entry. A proposal would more than double its lanes from eight to 18. All right, sticking with some board of news. Meanwhile, the mayor of New York City is suing transportation companies for the busing of thousands of migrants to his city. This lawsuit naming 17 mostly Texas-based companies. One of them is in Von Army. The owner of VLP Charter Buses in Von Army declined to comment to us about the lawsuit when we reached out to him by phone. The $700 million lawsuit seeks restitution for the cost the cities have had to endure to care for migrants that have been dropped off. In two years, Texas has spent some $4.5 billion through Operation Lone Star. No mayor should have to deal with the crisis of this magnitude. Last week, uh, we had 3,000 uh, migrants and asylum seekers who arrived here. There's some weeks we get uh, anywhere from 3,900 to 4,000. In a statement, Governor Greg Abbott called the lawsuit baseless, adding that buses and migrants have the constitutional right to do business and travel anywhere in the U.S. 
Well, fed up, frustrated, and frankly concerned. That's the feeling among some neighbors who live near a scrapyard on Frio City Road. Air quality was a key issue at a community meeting just two months ago. Now neighbors hope to escalate their health concerns with city and state leaders. In the new year, these neighbors are writing testimonials, hoping to hand deliver these concerns to city and state leaders, including the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, or TCEQ. It's not about having a business shut down. There's nobody in the community that's asking that. But what we are asking for is just some sort of resolution to a problem. As for the federal level, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency confirmed TCEQ is the lead environmental authority on Monterey Iron and Metal. In a statement sent to this week to KSAT 12, a spokesperson for Monterey says that they have, quote, invested heavily in detection systems, mitigation systems, safety planning, and expert hazard prevention. Some national news now, the latest on that deadly mass shooting at a high school in Perry, Iowa. One student has died and five others are wounded. ABC's Ike Jachi has the details of what police are saying about the suspect. We are Perry strong, Blue Jay strong, Iowa strong. This morning, community members in Perry waking up to the aftermath of yet another school shooting after a gunman opened fire at a local high school, killing one student and wounding five others. Units, we've got an active shooter situation at Perry High School. On the first day back to school from winter break, gunfire erupting at Perry High School. Everything is broken. Police swarming the school within minutes, finding multiple victims and students and faculty sheltering in place some running from the building. The shooter has been identified as 17-year-old Dylan Butler, a student at Perry High School. Police say Butler, seen in this photo posted to social media before the shootings with the caption, now we wait, shot and killed a sixth grader who was at the school for a school breakfast program, shooting four more students and the principal, Dan Marburger, before taking his own life. In social media posts reviewed by ABC News, the suspect referenced school shootings and bomb threats. Butler's friends say he and his sister were bullied. He got tired. He got tired of the bullying. Police have not confirmed a motive for the shooting. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have already been five mass shootings so far this year. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. North Korea has fired more than 200 artillery, artillery rounds off its west coast, according to South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff. The JCS said that the artillery fell within the buffer zone just north of the northern limit line, a military-controlled boundary between North and South Korea. There was, however, no damage done to South Korean residents or the military there. North Korea has previously fired multiple artillery rounds into the maritime buffer zone in late 2022. Residents on those islands there were asked to evacuate as shelters, evacu evacuate two shelters as the South Korean military is set to hold maritime shooting exercises in the afternoon. Hoax bomb threats were made against government buildings in several states for a second day in a row on Thursday. Officials say buildings in Arkansas, Maine, Mississippi, Montana and Florida were all evacuated as a result of the threats. The buildings were searched and nothing was found. The threats come one day after capital proceedings in several states were interrupted following a series of threats. In a statement, the FBI says they take them seriously, but it has no information to indicate any specific credible threat. Well, we're getting you going on your Friday morning, getting ready for hopefully what will be a relaxing weekend for you guys. Right now it's 640, at time is 640 and 50 degrees outside. And could we be in for an economic soft landing? Today's job report is expected to show us how that could be possible more after the break. Welcome back at 644. So today's jobs report is expected to show the U.S. gained 160,000 positions in December. Amy Kylie reports on the potential for a so-called economic soft landing. That is, for all Americans, good news. You have a job and prices are finally starting to moderate. New reports show the U.S. might pull off that elusive soft landing, curtailing inflation without a recession. Today's jobs update is another data point in the big picture, but many Americans say they just don't feel it. The typical American household has to spend over $1,000 more a month to buy the same goods and services as they did three years ago because of inflation, and that bugs people. For decades, we got accustomed 
to very low inflation. We forgot what it is for inflation to go up. Politicians are paying attention to that contrast between facts and feelings. What's important is what matters to the American people and their families at that kitchen table. And the economy is the big uh, kitchen table issue. Still, the numbers are there. Freddie Mac says mortgage rates have ticked up a bit, but that's after nine weeks of declines. Meanwhile, a new report shows record e-commerce this holiday season. I think you and I as consumers will keep spending just as long as we have a job. The Federal Reserve seems optimistic about the future. It's hinting it'll start cutting rates in the coming months. Do you think by this time next year people will be feeling a lot better? I'm Amy Kiley reporting. All right, let's give you a quick look at traffic right now with Transit Guy traffic cameras. I-35, Loop 410, traffic moving pretty good in that area there. Northeast side, 35 at O'Connor, we have traffic moving pretty smooth in both directions there. We're still following a uh, reported crash. Uh, this is by TxDOT out in the westbound lanes of Loop 410 at Northwest Military Drive. So if you're making your way on 1604, maybe headed to I-10 right now, just keep this in mind. Doesn't appear to be causing any serious backups at the moment. So one more quick look at Trans Guide here, Fredericksburg, Loop 10 traffic moving pretty good in this area right there. Do want to remind you guys that Vance Jackson will be closed out there on the far northwest side at 1604. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you're headed out this weekend. Yeah, that gets crowded there it does, anyway. Way. I think everyone's uh -oh. kind of used to the construction <laughs> in that area. It's a little worse this weekend, that's all. Yeah. yeah, and this morning, it looks like most of the roads are starting to dry out. We did have those showers overnight. Watch out for some fog, though. Head out 90, you're going to run into just a wall of fog, and also going out 10 in toward the hill country. So this is what it looks like out there at the airport. No, cars did not stop. The camera froze, but we've got uh, good visibility as of right now. Like I said, though, you head out 90 in toward Castroville, zero visibility, three quarters of a mile Hondo, half mile up around Bernie. So those are the, well, the only spots on this map with any fog northwest and going out to the west. And then further on out toward Eagle Pass, we've got some fog, Rock Springs, and then uh, Catula, just a little bit of fog, but it seems to be just centered right here on the west and northwest side, just to the, the west of town. So watch that. That's going to be the situation for at least the next uh, couple of hours and we might see some here in, in town as well. So just be on the lookout for that. Now, as far as rain, leftover sprinkles off to the east. That's it. That's going to continue to work its way off to the east. We've got a beautiful day in store today. We've got the clouds this morning. Just that uh, again, the, taking into account the leftover sprinkles off to the east and some fog this morning. Then we start to see more sunshine. It's been a while since we've seen a whole bunch of it, but we're going to see See plenty today and through the weekend. 62 degrees at noon. We top off at 67 later on today, and that is then going to be about four degrees above normal across the board, four or five degrees above that. Now we've got really dry. Got some humidity this morning, but drier air is going to be working its way in here then later on today, as well as for tomorrow and Sunday. And this is going to not only give us beautiful sunshine, but also allow temperatures to drop down pretty quickly in the overnight hours. It's going to be cold mornings, but then heat up easily. So we're going to be gaining basically 30 degrees throughout the course of the day tomorrow as well as on Sunday. Then notice how the humidity spikes going into Monday and then really plummets. That's the big front that moves on through here. So not only is it going to be bringing in drier air, but also those windy conditions. So the front's going to move through right now. It looks like early afternoon, just after lunchtime on Monday gusty Monday afternoon. Look at that. Even 45 mile per hour wind gusts up there in uh, Junction 44 Rock Springs, Del Rio, and then overnight the wind is definitely going to be picking up and into early Tuesday morning. We're looking at 50 45 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts in parts of the uh, hill country. So batten down the hatches, take down all the uh, bring in all the outdoor Christmas decorations this weekend before these strong winds hit and that's going to be Monday and Tuesday. Then after that, once things settle down, we get some colder air coming on in here. So we are looking at uh, potential for a freeze by the middle portion of the week today. Gorgeous 67 tomorrow. Gorgeous 67 chilly mornings in the upper 30s, 66 on Sunday. Clouds going to start to work their way back in here late in the day Sunday. Overnight Monday showers, a couple of thunderstorms as the front approaches. Most of that's going to be further up to the north, though. 70 Monday, 60 Tuesday, but again, very windy Monday night, late Monday afternoon, Monday night into Tuesday. We get ready for that. Yeah.
That 32 just kind of I sticking know. out there. Like <laughs> Get it's ready for down. that it's as like, well. Oh, no. We're and then <laughs> now winter weather. <laughs> way, way down the road. Looks yeah. like there's another big chunk of cold air coming on here. Now that's still, you know, a couple of weeks down off the off the charts down the road, but uh, yeah. yeah, we're still in winter. Yeah, it is January. Something to think about here. Okay, guys, 650 right now and 50 degrees outside. Let's look out there with live cam. So yeah, this morning, no worries. It's not 30 degrees out there. It's it's 50, so that's tolerable. And no rain this morning, so things are looking good, and we are looking forward to that sunshine later today. We'll be right back. musical history of Sonic the Hedgehog comes to life during performances of the Sonic Symphony World Tour. The concert combines orchestral and rock band performances synced with video elements from the history of the Sonic game franchise. Compared to like a typical orchestral concert, there's a lot more tech involved because we have like click track to sync with the video and also the band elements. You have a lot more things to manage. And also like you have to write the orchestral scores in a particular way so that it sounds great with the band combined. The head of MGP Live, the production company behind the tour, knows just how popular the Blue Hedgehog is among his fans. That's the reason that I'm working hard to do as many shows as possible and to make happy fans that enjoy the show because I've seen the reaction. Two of the composers of Sonic's musical motifs have appeared at select shows on the tour and feel the character's positivity is part of his popularity. I have been a Sonic composer for a long time, like uh, from the 90s. This is a huge chance to spread our music with new format, uh, new arrangement. The feel of Sonic and, and the positivity that surrounds Sonic and all of his friends is probably the element that people are most drawn to. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, well, it's 6.55, and how are the roads looking out there? All right, guys, it's been pretty good throughout most of our morning. Taking you outside Trans Guide, looking at 281 Loop 410. Traffic moving pretty good through our area there. We're still following this uh, crash here on the far north side. This one being reported out there at uh, westbound lanes of Loop 16 to 4 at Northwest Military Drive. But otherwise, been pretty smooth sailing out there, Mike. How are things looking? Good. Well, as you can see, clouds are starting to clear out off to the west, which here in town, once the, we lose that blanket, we may see a little bit of fog develop. Uh, very thick fog, zero visibility, Castroville, Hondo, Bernie Stage. We're going to make it up to 67 today and a great looking weekend. All right. Thanks for joining us today.